As we've mentioned before, there's also a lot going on with the airflow around the airplane in flight. Aerodynamics is the branch of mechanics dealing with forces exerted by air in motion, and we'll examine several of these forces. First, we'll analyze drag and its various components. Then, we'll examine the relationship and differences between thrust and power. Drag is produced by moving the airplane through the air and is considered to act parallel to the relative wind and rearward. Drag has two components, induced drag and parasite drag. Induced drag is caused by generating lift and parasite drag is the price paid to move the airplane through the air. Back when we were kids and held our hand out the car window, two kinds of parasite drag were evidenced. Most of the drag was form, or what is sometimes called profile drag. The form of your hand at a high angle to the relative wind caused most of the drag. Then, when you streamlined your hand to point into the relative wind, the drag decreased and became mostly skin friction drag. Comparing a right flyer with today's modern jets, one realizes that without streamlining, high cruise speeds would not be possible. At relatively low subsonic speeds, form drag increases approximately as the square of the speed. Put another way, if airspeed is doubled and other factors are not changed, the form drag quadruples. This partially explains why doubling the horsepower doesn't double the top speed. Skin friction drag is more difficult to reduce. However, flush riveting, smooth paint, and waxing can reduce skin friction drag. During World War II, when a few more knots of speed sometimes made the difference between life or death, many pilots and flight crews used a lot of elbow grease waxing their airplanes. These World War II airplanes were streamlined enough to make it worthwhile to reduce skin friction. This was a significant change from World War I airplanes, which were not waxed because form drag was the greatest part of parasite drag. Another part of parasite drag is interference drag. This is additional drag caused by the intersection of different parts of the airplane, especially the wings and the fuselage. The resulting turbulent airflow can double the total drag of the individual parts. Filleting, or a streamlined fairing, is used in these spots to produce a more gradual mixing of the airflow. Induced drag is a byproduct of lift and is the price paid for creating lift. The wingtip vortex consists of an upward flow beyond the wingtip and a downwash behind the trailing edge of the wing. This induced downwash is the source of induced drag and is not the same as the downwash needed to produce lift. This downwash at the wingtip tilts the lift vector aft of the right angle to the relative wind, which creates induced drag, the rearward acting component of lift. As we slow the airplane, the angle of attack must be increased in order to maintain altitude. This intensifies the wingtip vortex and its associated downwash, so induced drag is greater. Induced drag becomes larger as the angle of attack is increased. However, induced drag can be reduced by tip tanks, spill plates, and winglets, all of which reduce the wingtip vortex.